Zoe, I'm a makeup artist from Hertfordshire and I have just started YouTube, so this is my first ever video, so please go easy on me. I'm just going to show you how to do this soft glam. So first of all, I have put some of the magic cream all over my face. Um, I love this moisturiser, especially for my skin because it's quite oily, so it's, it's hydrating but it's not too hydrating. So this is the NARS Radiant Longwear in the shade Fiji. This is what the bottle looks like. The reason I love this foundation is it's really good for kind of combination to oily skin. It's really full coverage. It doesn't feel like you've got much on your skin at all, so that's really nice. So I'm using the Real Techniques Instapop Face Brush. I love this brush for foundation because it just gives a really good coverage and it makes it not streaky at all. I prefer to use um, brushes over sponges because I feel like I don't get as much wastage. So you can see already, coverage is amazing. You don't need much product at all. I probably do about three to four pumps for a full face. With all the NARS foundations, I find them very buildable. If you have acne prone or blemished skin or scars, anything like that, and you want to cover any redness or pigmentation, just build the coverage up all over the face. And then on the areas you need the coverage most, you want to pat with more product on the brush. And you kind of lighten the touch the more you want the coverage. And if you have a nose that you find foundation doesn't sit very well on, you can use a sponge on your nose as well. So now that the base is all done, I'm now going to use a bit of cream contour. So for cream contour, I like to use two different colours. So I like to use a warm one for my cheekbones and my jaw, and then a slightly more cool toned one for my nose. So for my nose contour, I'm going to use the Meron Medium Dark 2 Cream Foundation. And I like to kind of blend as I go. I used to draw line, lines and then try and blend them out. But I do find it easier to kind of blend as I go. I will also do a bit of powder contour on the nose as well as cream. My best top tips for nose contour are to try and keep the lines quite close together. So you've just got one thin line in the middle. So now the nose contour is done. I've just blended it in using my foundation brush with what's left on it. I'm now doing some cream contour on my cheekbones. For this I'm using the Sosu warm contour stick so a lot of people do tend to do their cream contour on their cheekbones a bit too low so that can actually make your cheeks look fatter so the whole point of contouring is to make you look slimmer so um the best tip i would say is to try and kind of follow the natural shadow of your cheekbone and blend kind of up into the cheek making sure you don't take it too high if you do we're going to conceal over that later anyway and then for the jaw, I just like to kind of imagine I've got JLo's jawline. You kind of go in a straight line along the jaw and you're going up towards the ear. And then I'm also going to do around the edge of my face. So if you had a smaller forehead, you might not want to contour the forehead too much. But if you've got a large forehead or just a normal forehead, you do want to kind of contour here a bit. I also like to cream contour in the temples as well. So the way that I'm doing the cream contour is the same as with the nose. I want to blend as I go rather than trying to blend any harsh lines because I find that makes it a lot harder to get a really seamless finish. And then if you have any really blemished skin on your cheeks, I would definitely keep the pressure quite light to do this. And I'm just doing kind of circular motions. And then if you feel like you need to, you can go back in with your foundation brush and make sure there's no lines and that it's all perfectly blended.
So now I'm going to conceal. When I conceal, I am also concealing to highlight. So I'm going to use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in shade Light and Light Neutral. Um, the reason I like to use two shades, I like to use a really highlighting shade directly underneath the eye, and then I like to use a slightly darker one along the cheekbone that kind of matches almost the skin tone, maybe a tiny bit lighter. The reason for this is um, your kind of darkness is generally going to be more in this area here, and if you take this bright, bright colour all the way along, it's going to look a bit too harsh and almost drag. So I'm just focusing the concealer on this part of the eye. And then I've just used a bit of the light neutral in these areas around. So if you are someone who doesn't wear much makeup and doesn't like their kind of skin looking too full coverage, I would just suggest using the concealer on this area here and then blending it out with what's left rather than applying this much before you blend. That would be the best way to give it a more natural finish. So now I'm just patting in the concealer. So you can already see it's brightening the under eye and concealing any darkness. I have tried so many different concealers and I always go back to this one. So I don't like to do too much of a harsh highlight or full coverage product to do highlighting. So I do just use what's left of the concealer on my chin and down the bridge of my nose. Just tapping it very lightly so that it just mattifies a little bit. And then I'm also taking the concealer right up to the edges of where that nose contour was. So you're almost trying to do it there so that there's just two thin lines left from where the cream contour was earlier and you just want to blend it out again you want to keep the pressure quite light here and um, that's going to prevent you from lifting the product off with the sponge because that is not what you want to do right now okay perfect so that is the base done now i'm just going to set it with some powder so now I'm just using some of the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I'm going to use this to set my face. So once you use a setting powder all over your face, then I like to go in with a bit of powder contour. So for this, I'm going to use the Dark Golden Mineralized Skin Finish from MAC. The reason I like this product so much is because it's not like really super pigmented. So you can really build it up, which makes a really nice contour so I'm just going over all the places that we did with the cream contour so the best way to do this is to think of a three shape so you're going around the edge of the face under the cheekbone under the jawline I'm just going to use a bit of the mirror here because I cannot see what I'm doing so again when you're applying this a lot of it is about the pressure you're applying so I'm literally kind of just dusting the top of my skin rather than patting it on or dragging it. I want to make sure I don't take off any of that coverage that we put on earlier. I'm just using a bit of bronze on the edge of the nose. I'll go over this later when I do nose contour, but I just love to bring that warmth back into the middle of the face using powder. So you can see how I've really built that up to create a nice chiseled face. Let me just check nice and blended yeah so now i'm going to put a bit of blusher on so my favorite blusher to use is the orgasm from nars um this is actually like a mini one that i got i think i got it free when i bought some stuff from them i do actually use the same brush that i use for bronzer i just make sure i kind of dust off what's left on the brush onto my hand um and then go back in so for blusher i like to really focus on the apples of my cheeks Kind of smile a little bit and then you know where to put it. But then I also like to take it along the cheekbone as well because this one's got a bit of a highlight to it. I use it as my highlighter as well. I do like a really, really blush look, if you can't tell already. I used to hate blusher and I really I really don't understand how because I absolutely love it now. So now I'm gonna do my brows. So at the moment I'm growing my brows out, so they're quite hairy, which makes them easier but harder to do at the same time 
So I'm going to use the HG Brows Colour Fix in shade Vamp. I really love this product because you can really stick the hairs up with it. So if you're not getting them laminated right now, this is definitely a good in-between product to use. So you can see already it's given a bit of colour to the brows and it's made them look a bit fuller. And I'm just brushing the brows up with it and they literally stick so once you've put it on you can almost feel them like fixed into place, they are not moving anywhere. I don't have too many hairs through the front of my brow so I always like to make sure the ones that I do have I pick up a little bit using this product. So I'm probably going to do a bit more with the brows but I'm going to do that once I've done the rest of the eyes. I'm now going to go in with some concealer on my brows just to carve them out make them look a little bit neater and tidier. So I'm using a bit of the Tarte Shape Tape concealer. I'm literally just going underneath the brow. My top tip for this would be using a rounded brush. So the brush I'm using is the PC40 from Peaches and Cream. And it needs to be a nice thin brush, if that makes sense. So rounded, thin, flat brush. And then just blend it kind of out the edges so you don't have like a line whilst we're on this quarantine period use it as a time to grow your eyebrows out and get them really nice and full so that when you come back to your next hd brow appointment or when you book in for your first hd brow appointment you'll have more hair to work with so you'll notice i've only taken it to like the crease of the eye the reason i've done this is i like to use eye primer on the rest of the eyelid so for this I'm going to use the P. Louise base in shade 2 and I'm going to pat this on the eyelid. So for this I'm using quite a light pressure and I'm just patting. My top tip for when you're applying your eyeshadow and any eye makeup is don't try and close your eyes because your eye shape will scrunch up and change. It will make it harder for you to get a creaseless eyeshadow look and it will be harder for you to see the lid space that you have. So I would always look down on the mirror just so you can see a lot of your lid space but you can still have your eyes nice and stretched so that you don't get those creases. When you've got lash extensions my top tip for this as well is less product is better because the more product you use the easier it is going to be to go on your lash extensions. Just get as close as you can to the edges but don't worry too much if there's a little gap because we're going to eyeshadow over it anyway in a bit. I kind of then patted it into the concealer that was there so it's all blended into one. I'm now going to go in with my first colour. So for this look I'm going to use my favourite palette at the moment which is the KKW Artist and Muse palette. And I'm going to use the shade I'm Inspired which is a kind of dark brown colour. So I've already put a bit of this on my brush. But I'm just going to pack a little bit more on. So I actually start with the darkest colour first when I'm doing any sort of glam look or even a natural look because this is going to be more of a natural look. We're not going to need too much of this dark one because we are doing more of a soft glam. However, once it's all blended in with the other colours it will be needed to add some depth to these corners. So I'm basically using this uh, MAC 221 brush and I'm kind of focusing it right on the outer crease of the eye. Almost in like a sideways V shape. You want it to go along the lash line, but you also want it to go along the crease. And I'm kind of patting it on just to get some colour payout. Just being careful not to pack too much product on because then that's when you'll get fallout under the eyes. And because we've done the base first, um, that can happen. If you're doing more of a glam look or a really sparkly look or a really colourful look, I would advise doing the base last if you can. So now I'm doing small circular motions and I'm using the shade Don't Move, which is this one here. I'm using the same brush, I've just kind of dusted off the excess product onto my hand. And I'm basically going now between the skin and the dark colour, doing very small circular motions and using a very light pressure. This is the one thing I find I teach a lot when I'm doing my lessons is pressure. A lot of people are applying far too much pressure. So 
So I'm taking it all the way around where we did that dark colour and I'm starting to take it further in around the crease here. So if you've got hooded eyes, I do find this style of makeup is going to make your eyes look less hooded because I am a fellow hooded eye. So it will definitely make your eyes look bigger and less hooded. So because this colour is quite an ashy one, I can actually use this to enhance the nose contour slightly. I will also use a different contour product for this, but I'm going to just start with the eyeshadow just so that the whole look blends seamlessly together. My favourite thing to do with makeup is this part because I think it just makes the nose look so much more snatched and it brings the um, eyes and base together so that you don't just have eyes then base, it's kind of all one. So you can see already it's just creating that bridge looking smaller. So just to enhance that further I'm going to use a different brush and a different product. So I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. You can see this one's quite used. Um, and I'm using the middle shade which is this light brown one. So it's very, it's like a nice ashy light brown. I'm going to start kind of in the brow just going over what we were just doing. And then I'm just going to very lightly press the product into where we did that nose contour earlier. So you don't want very much product on the brush at this stage, otherwise you'll start getting lines. And you don't want to drag because you might end up taking the foundation off, so you just want to make sure you're patting. You can also do a little bit of nostrils, especially if you've got quite wide nostrils. Right, so now that that's done, I'm going to put a bit of highlighter on my nose, on my Cupid's bow. So I'm just using the Anastasia Amorezi highlighter. I do wish they still sold this product, I'm not going to lie to you. But luckily I have two. Both have been broken, but I'm still going to use it. So I always like to do that with my finger, I just feel like I have more control of the product. Um, I'm now going to use the Peaches and Cream PC15 brush to do a little bit of highlight on my cheekbones. Because I have quite textured skin, I don't like to highlight my cheekbones too much. So I'm just going to focus it just here, and that's it. Because that blush had a bit of highlighter as well, we don't really need to add very much more. I think that's enough for me. I'm now going to use an eye primer for underneath the eyes for this. I like to use the Paint Pot from MAC. This is an eye primer. I'm using the shade Painterly. I think I need to get another one of these. It's looking very empty. So I'm just going to place this just along the bottom lash line. Really close to the lashes, not taking it too low because it is quite creased otherwise. Um, this basically is just going to give you more colour payout for the eyeshadow you put underneath the eye. I find if you don't use an eye primer under the eye, you won't get the same look on the bottom as you have on the top. So I'm just placing the same colour we started with, which is the dark brown. And I'm using a flat eyeshadow brush. This is the Cryolan 3712 brush. This is back from my college days. I haven't actually found a flat eyeshadow brush like it, but I'm sure there's loads out there. I'll show you what it looks like though. It's just a nice really flat brush. Um, if you want to save on brushes and on brush cleaning, you can use the same brush you used before and just press it like that and that will create a thin brush. So that's a really good top tip. So for this look, I am then going to go in with some shimmer. However, if you didn't want to go for something super glam and you just want to think quick, you could easily just finish the eyes at this stage. Um, put some put some mascara on the bottom, put some lipstick on and be done with it. However, I'm going to show you something a bit more glam. Um, this is like a soft glam, so maybe something that if you might want to go out to a wedding or any of those events once we actually get to go to them. Um, that's the kind of thing this would be a good look for. Um, to be honest with you, I have a lot of people request it for nights out as well, so anything really. 
It's just very wearable. Now I'm gonna use the eyeshadow brush we were using earlier and a bit of the contour we were using for the nose. I'm gonna blend the edge of the eyeshadow into the foundation. So when I was high contouring earlier, I contoured the temples. So this is why, because we want to join the temples almost to the eyeshadow a little bit. And this will enhance the cheekbones and the contour, but it will also kind of give that seamless look. So you can also go back in with your bronzer at this stage and just enhance that depth there a little bit more as well. So I'm going to add some shimmer to the eyes now, which is my favourite thing to do. So I'm going to use an eye primer to get the shimmers to stick. And I'm actually going to mix a few colours together, so I'm really, really sorry about your bank account. If you like this look, you might have to purchase about five pigments, but I promise it's worth it. They're all going to be used, so I'm now using the NYX Glitter Primer. And I'm going to apply this all over this front part of the eyelid. So the main areas I tend to highlight with kind of uh, pigments are the this part of the eye, the front part here, or the centre of the eye for a spotlight effect. It all depends on what you want to go for, but normally I will use this sort of look on most people. Um, if someone's got really uh, wide apart eyes, um, the more um, highlight in the middle of the eye, the sun, uh, not sunset, spotlight eye, sorry, um, that is much more flattering. So I'm just using this NYX glitter primer and just patting the product on I'm not using very much because I don't want it to go foil looking. So that's enough. It does dry really fast, so you have to work quite quickly with it. So I've got to quickly open all my pigments and choose the ones I want to use. So I'm going to use the Hollywood and Luxe pigments from Peaches and Cream. So Hollywood's like a gold, a light gold colour. And then... Lux is a kind of rose gold light colour. So you can see that Hollywood pigment's absolutely stunning. I'm going to use a little bit of the Lux pigment now next to it. So I've kind of gone Hollywood, Lux, and then I'm going to do some of the Inglot 132, which looks kind of pink but actually comes out more gold. So it almost creates like a multi-tonal effect by doing the gold, kind of pinky rose gold, and then the gold again. It just looks really gorgeous. So the brush I'm using for this is the 242S from MAC. You just want any sort of flat eyeshadow brush or flat rounded brush. This one's kind of a bit fluffy because I use it quite a lot. So I'm dipping into the pigment applying a little bit onto my hand so that I don't get too much fallout, especially because I've already done the base. And then just applying it on the glitter primer. The only thing I will say is if you've got lash extensions, you're probably going to get some in your lashes. And my best top tip to get rid of that would be use your brush and brush it out carefully. Um, if that doesn't work, then use a bit of liquid eyeliner and just colour in your eyelashes afterwards. So now that's done, I'm going to use a little bit of a dark brown from the Soft Glam palette. Excuse the state of this one, this is one of my old ones that I use myself. So it's this colour here, which is the shade Sultry. It's like a sparkly, rose goldy, dark brown colour. Um, I do find it's easier to blend shimmer with another shimmer, but a pressed shimmer is easier than a loose shimmer I think to blend out the edges of a pigment so I'm just going between that dark colour and the shimmer and just patting over the edges so that there's no kind of straight line perfect so that's the top part of the shimmer done so the reason I love this eyeliner product so much is it's really easy to use because of its consistency it's not really dry but it is long wearing, so once it is dry on your eyelid, it shouldn't move anywhere. If you have got really hooded eyes though, I wouldn't recommend looking up until the product is totally dry, so give it a couple minutes. 
my best top tips for eyeliner is don't try and kind of draw it on. You want to kind of almost print it using the brush. When you're doing the front part of the um, eyeliner, you're kind of using the brush this way. And if you're using the other side, you flip it so that you're using that kind of flick edge to create a flick. And then if you do want a little bit of a wing, I always try and take a little bit of the product off because I like to do a smoked out wing rather than a strong wing at the moment. And I just kind of go in that sort of direction, almost following towards the end of your brow, kind of in that angle. Happy with that. So I'm going to go on to doing the lips now. So for the lips I'm going to use the same lip products that I used in my previous um, Instagram live. Uh, so it's going to be the Morph Sweet Tea Lip Liner and the Arbonne Magnolia Lipstick. Right, so for the liner, let's get a mirror so I can see. So I always like to overline my lips a little bit. The key to overlining is don't overline the cupid's bow much. Just overline this area here and always keep this in like a straight line. So you can see how much bigger the lips look already. So this is going to create an ombre dip. So it's quite dark. But the lipstick is really, um, really pale so the combination of the two will make a nice finish. I don't really have a technique when it comes to lip liner. Um, I probably do it differently how on myself as how I do on a client. On myself, I just draw it on. On a client, I'll probably start from the middle and work my way outwards. So I've also kind of coloured in the outer edges of the lip. And then I'm just going to put the lipstick on mainly on the centre of the lip. And then blend it in a bit. So now I am going to use the Urban Decay Double Life Eyeliner for the waterline. So this goes on the waterline and I'm going to take it into the bottom lashes as well. And this just adds a little bit of drama to the look, makes it a little bit more glam. Perfect. So now I'm going to highlight the inner corner of my eyes. For this kind of daytime glam look, it's quite popular to go quite a light shade here. So I am using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette and I'm using the lightest shade Tempura. Tempura? I don't know how you say it. And I'm just patting it on with a fluffy brush. So I've just done it kind of blended into where the shimmer was and then right on that inner corner of the eye. Um, I do want to give a little bit of um, shimmer to the inner corner of the eye, so I'm going to use a little pencil brush. This is a Spectrum A12 brush. And I'm going to put a bit of the glitter glue on and then add a little bit of the Hollywood pigment here as well. And again, if you want to go for something a bit easier, you can do all of these steps and just miss out all the shimmers and just do like a matte colour on that area. Just always use like a more lighter colour to kind of keep it highlighted. So that is my finished look. This is a soft glam, kind of brown and gold look. Works for every day. If you start getting a Skype call and you want to look good for it or FaceTime, let me know if you like it.